Hey everyone, in this video we're going to revisit the Zephyrus G14 after using several different configurations during the last two months. This is not a detailed G14 review, I already did that in a previous video and I've linked it for you here. Instead we're going to talk about how the Ryzen 7 and Ryzen 9 versions fare against each other in daily use and games, about gaming on an external monitor, about what to choose between the QHD and Full HD 120Hz screen options, and about some of the quirks you should be aware of before deciding on a G14. Of course, there's no way to change the laptop's physical aspects at this point. The G14 is what it is, and that's a premium built 14-inch performance notebook with an excellent keyboard, pretty good I.O., two alright screen options, and astounding performance for the form factor, but also a computer that runs hot with games and blows a fair bit of hot air into the screen. Asus offers the choice of either a white and silver or a dark grey color. Normally, I'd prefer the former, as the white and silver surfaces do a great job at hiding smudges. But this white model also comes with this frustrating silver keyboard. The implementing backlighting is not very bright or uniform, and corroborated with the silver keys makes the writing difficult to read in many situations. Could you live with this? Sure. But I for one would rather go with a grey version with the black keys and white lighting. This aside, we should also quickly touch on the secondary anime matrix display on the lid. It's a cool extra, I'll give it that, but if given the choice, I'd prefer not getting it. Non-anime models should be more affordable, as well as slightly thinner and lighter by 50 grams or so. There is a choice you can make when it comes to the screens though, at least in most markets. While the base configurations only get a rather mediocre Full HD 250 nits panel, the mid and top tier versions are available with either a Full HD 120Hz or a QHD 60Hz panel. Both of these are matte, IPS and non-touch, and fairly similar in terms of specs as you can see here. However, the Full HD panel is about 20% brighter in our tests, which makes it a more appropriate option for bright light environments. The QHD panel, on the other hand, offers the increased sharpness, deeper blacks and higher contrast, corroborated with almost no light bleeding around the edges. With daily use though, it's nearly impossible to tell these differences even when having the two laptops side by side, but the deeper blacks are noticeable when watching a movie at night. There are however a few other aspects to consider here. First off, there's scaling in Windows and various apps. For the most part, apps and browsers scale well, but I've noticed fuzziness on the QHD panel in Word or WinRAN or Total Commander, and there's simply no way you can use this QHD panel without scaling it at around 150%. The higher resolution on the QHD panel also takes a toll on battery life. It's not significant, but a Full HD model should last for 30 to 60 minutes longer with daily use and 1 to 2 hours longer with video on a charge. Still, expect good battery life with both variants, around 5 to 7 hours of daily multitasking and 8 to 10 hours of video. And then there's the gaming aspect. If you're looking to game on this laptop, the Full HD panel is the obvious choice, with a higher refresh rate and more appropriate resolution for the hardware inside. However, both these panels support Active Sync, which eliminates screen tearing, and they're both rather slow, with great query response times of around 40 milliseconds. That means you'll run into ghosting in fast-paced games, the kind that would normally benefit from increased refresh rate. I'm not playing any competitive titles, so ghosting was not an issue for me on either of these screens, but it's something to keep in mind. If you're into such titles, none of the G14 screen options might cut it for you, and instead you should look into the fastest 15-inch panels out there, such as those on the Zephyrus G14 or M15. Gaming aside, the G14s run coolly and quietly with browsing and video and everyday multitasking. This was offers several power profiles in Armory Crate. Silent is okay for very light use and video, but the laptop gets sluggish on the setting and it's not something I could see myself using every day. Instead, I'd mostly keep it on performance and only switch to turbo when running demanding loads as this ramps up the fans. The fans are always active though on any of these modes. You're not going to notice them in a regular school or office environment, but they're still audible in a silent room and I wish there was a setting that would allow me to turn this off completely when watching videos or browsing. Things change with demanding loads and games. On turbo, the fans ramp up to 40 to 45 dB at head level, which is not as loud as some of the other gaming ultra portables out there, but you'll still probably want to hook up headphones to cover them up. Heat also builds up, both on the inside and on the outside. Both the Ryzen 7 and 9 CPUs constantly run at 90 to 95 degrees with games, and the RTX 2060 GPU constantly averages temperatures around 70 to 80 degrees on turbo and slightly higher on performance. As for external temperatures, we're looking at high 40s to low 50s in the hottest parts, but the WHD and arrow keys stay within fairly comfortable mid to high 30s in this design. A fair bit of hot air is still blown into the screen though, but the fairly chunky chin helps. That's why the plastic chin hits temperatures in the high 40s, yet the actual panel runs a bit cooler in the mid to low 40s in the hottest areas. 
Specs-wise, the Ryzen 9 processor available on the top tier model comes on top of the Ryzen 7 version in some of the CPU heavy loads and benchmarks, but the two are within 2-7% in most situations, so the difference is negligible with real-life use. The major difference between the two is the Ryzen 9's ability to run at higher power in short loads, at up to 53 watt, before stabilizing at 35 watt in sustained loads. In comparison, the Ryzen 7 processor runs at 42 watt in shorter bursts, before dropping to 35 watt, which is why the 9 scores better in some tests. I'm only going to include a few of the test results in this video, and you should check out the written article for the detailed scores and performance logs, including performance on the silent profile, where the Ryzen platform pretty much smokes the Intel competition while running quietly and efficiently. It's the first link in the description. However, with demanding workloads such as modeling, rendering or programming, the Ryzen 7 and Ryzen 9 configurations paired with the RTX 2060 GPU perform roughly the same, and that's no surprise. The difference is even smaller in games, as the processors are both overpowered in comparison to the Nvidia graphics chip. That's why I'd like an option to limit the CPUs in these laptops, the kind of tweaks throttle stop allows for Intel models. On one hand, that would lower the temperatures, and on the other, would allow some extra headroom for the GPU, which might result in slightly improved frame rates in most titles, especially those GPU bound. It might sound counterintuitive, but it makes sense on these unbalanced configurations with a significant performance gap between the CPU and GPU. As they are, I'm not comfortable with the hardware running as hot as it does. The CPU is mostly the culprit here, as it runs at high clocks and power without a matching performance contribution. Sure, these temperatures are within specified limits, but heat and electronics don't play well together on the long term. Gaming on the performance mode could be an interesting option to pursue though. This profile quiets the fan to 41 to 42 dB down from 45 to 46 dB on turbo, but it also slightly limits the CPU and that allows it to run cooler, averaging temperatures in the 85 to 90 degrees. At the same time, this profile leads to slightly higher GPU temperatures, which now runs in the 78 to 84 degrees uh, Celsius range. However, if you're going to use the laptop with a cooling pad, performance might be the best balanced gaming setting available right now. Surprisingly, hooking up an external monitor and closing the lid somehow translates in that setting that I was talking about in the previous section, limited CPU power allocation and full power GPU. With the laptop sitting on a desk, the CPU averages 80 to 82 degrees in Witcher 3 and Far Cry 5, and the GPU averages 78 to 80 degrees. Raising the G14 from the desk and perhaps placing it in some sort of vertical stand further drops the CPU temperatures to 78 to 80 degrees and the GPU to 70 to 75 degrees, which are those ideal temperatures I was aiming for. However, I noticed that gaming on the external monitor but with the lid open doesn't trigger this behavior. Instead, the CPU keeps running at 25 plus watt in this case, yet as soon as I close the lid, the power drops to around 50 watt with the corroborated drop in temperatures. I'm curious if that's only the case with my sample or you experienced the same behavior on your unit. Let me know in the comments section. Ok, that's about it for this video. Button point, having used these G14s over the last weeks, I haven't changed my mind from the initial review. There's simply no other laptop like the Zephyrus G14 right now, with the same sort of performance in the same kind of compact form factor and premium build. Even so though, this remains a niche product with three potential deal breakers. The screen choices, the silver keyboard on the white model and the high internal temperatures. Nothing you could do about the screen choices, unless ASUS manages to source a faster 120Hz Full HD display that could fill up this gap for competitive gamers. As for that silver keyboard, you either accept it, or you go with the Space Gray model instead if that's an option in your region, which is what I'd recommend. However, ASUS could surely do something about those temperatures though, by providing a gaming optimized power profile that would limit the overpowered CPU, allowing it to run cooler with games. That should not be hard to implement, since the profile seems to exist already, but it only kicks in automatically when playing games on an external monitor with the lid closed. Will it happen though? I should hope so, but I'm not going to hold my breath for it. Ok, this is going to be one of my final Zephyrus G14 videos, as I'm moving on to the pile of other laptops awaiting my attention, but if you have any other questions about the series, get in touch down below and I'll try to help. See you later.